The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 54, NASDAQ is up 42, S&P is up 12, gold contract flat, 12.94 an ounce. We have silver also flat, $15.08 an ounce. Light sweet crude up 44 cents, $62.52 a barrel. Notes and bonds, you get the 10-year note up two ticks, 123.19. 30-year bond up seven, 147.29. Now, it's going to get interesting with the note and bond market, folks, that they both rejected lower price out here this morning uh so we'll see where they get, get any juice as we uh, go throughout this trading day king dollar king dollar still up those uh, march 7 highs we're up by uh, 75 ticks 96 950 no volume on the way up with king dollar no volume on the way down hanging at the highs though bottom line euro is at uh, 112.25 to one u.s dollar yen is out here at uh, 111 and a half and the pound is at 130 to one u.s dollar our phone number is 877-927-6648. And uh, so jobs data. Jobs uh, come in. Uh, yeah. Uh, Decent number, right? 196,000. Expectation had been about 175,000. This, of course, for March. Um, and quite a rise above February's miss as they talk about 20,000 in February. That number revised up to 33,000. But nonetheless, they were making sure, not making sure, they were hoping that would be an anomaly. Right. Seems like that was the case, right? right? Um, but pretty muted response from the market so far. Um, yeah, the, so the, the, the mantra out here for is uh, in the analysis is that it's the Goldilocks economy, that it's just enough that the Fed won't go up on rates, it's, you know, not, not too much, and it's like, okay. Well, you know. Trump gets his henchmen in there, maybe they won't. Oh, with the, with the two? Oh, the, 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 I mean, not to joke, but uh, yeah, the, it's supposed uh, to be quite an independent board, and Herman yeah, Cain yeah. and Stephen Moore are not exactly independent. Right, right. Um, so, so and this is, so let's see, uh, Trump says the Federal Reserve should cut interest rates and stop uh, sh shrinking its balance sheet. They should drop rates and they should get rid of quantitative tightening, uh, he told reporters as he departed the White House. Well, uh, there's a reason why the Fed's supposed to be, you know, impartial, because right. any president is going to want rates to be negative 10 percent, okay? Be <laughs> seriously. That's true. Because the inflation will come when they're out of the office and right. they won't have to deal with the crashing economy. Right. So right. keep that in mind as you really just want things to keep chugging. Yep. And if we go over and we take a look, uh, so let's go take a look at these, the 10-year first. So, you know, operationally, technically, this is a nice setup here this morning, you know, because we, we had out here, you know, that they... If we go back, let's see, is that, yeah, that's, that is Monday, right? Yeah. So Monday, we had the 10-year back down, uh, 1.7 million contracts. Now you're going against the strength of 2.5, so that's okay. a nice setup. Um, you know, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, man, it was, you know, it couldn't hold price, you know. So and specifically what that means, folks, is that, you know, you came down with light volume, but it stayed at its lows. So what happened here today is really cool. You know, we got to a lower low. We got to 123.08. That strength right there is 123.10, the bottom of the strength. You have 935,000 contracts. So this will do about 1. Point, let's say 7, 1.8. And you get a rejection of price. If we stay here, that's saying that, guess what, folks? Next week, this thing wants to go topside once again. Uh, that's your 10. If we go to the 30, they operate the same way. But it's always nice when they are in harmony with each other. Sure. You can see that the 30 actually looks a little bit more powerful. Yeah. But, you know, it got underneath that low. That low there is uh, the strength is 147.02. Look at this, 147.01. Yeah. So weird when this happens, folks. Sure. Okay. When you're talking big numbers and you get one tick, it's like, okay. And from that point on, we're almost up a full point. There's 32 ticks in one point. And you can see we went from 01, we're at 30 right now. Yeah. Um, so, you know. Quite a pop. It's quite a pop. And it's saying that they're buying notes again, they're buying bonds again. And the real question's got to be, um, you know, S&P, the, uh, the S&P, it's, 
It's over this October 10th uh, level right now. The October 10th level in the SPY was uh, 286.91. You're at 288.27. Yeah. If we take a look at the cash, the cash is a good thing to look at just because the aspect of there's no dividends in them. So 228.74. What a way over it. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're decently above it on the futures that you just pulled up to. Yeah. No, just in terms of the futures as well. Yeah. So. Or the SPY, whatever you were just looking at, the previous chart. Yeah, the SPY. The SPY. The SPY. Yeah. We were decently above it too. That's interesting. Now look at that. The future is higher. Twenty nine oh five. Hmm, interesting. Different contracts. That's what's yes. going on there too. So we'll see where this whole thing is going to shake out. Um, we take a look at uh, some of the. Higher volume equities, and uh, we'll see whether we're going to get in volume or not today. L yesterday was a light volume day. You get uh, GE or GE's flat, advanced micro. It's always at the top. It so, is. Yeah. yeah. That's down three three cents. You get look at Snap. Snap was up sixty eight cents. Yeah, and I wonder. Uh, I heard them them talking about launching a new advertising network that would allow companies to place their ads within other apps. Um, <laughs> yesterday, maybe we can go into the news because okay. I, I was I was intrigued by it because obviously advertising um, oh. and maybe they're going to pivot a bit. Um, New products driving engagement, right? Let's yeah. see. I, yeah, I'm not sure that's what I'm talking about, but that's probably what... Uh... So let's see. Uh, one day after it hosted an event where it announced a suite of new products and services, including a video game business, analysts said the offering should help drive engagement at the social media company, even though they questioned how easily the offerings would be monetized. Stock was up 4%, highest on track for the highest close since August. Snap remains down nearly 25% from the peak in April of last year. Um, and let's see what they have going on here. So. They got a number of analysts here. We'll just read the first. We're slightly encouraged. Potential improvement in execution with new products and potential rise in engagement. Okay, so they're just talking about within Snap right here. Um, it's definitely the last few months. It's got some big traction. Oh, it has. There's no, there's for no sure. Doubt. Yeah. Yeah. So if we just look at that, let's just look at that move, man. So, yeah. And maybe this is where I just saw some of the anecdotes and some of the statements that were up there talking about um, Snapchat was all about privacy in the beginning, right? That's right. good luck. You yes. snap it, you, you look gone. at it, read it, right. and then it's gone. And maybe, you know, as the, the, the story after story of Facebook coming out and saying all your data is out there, that maybe they might have a leg up as that becomes something to the forefront to what people are talking about. Yeah. So we go over to Amazon. Now, Amazon's trading at the 1835, and there's... There's a couple stories out here today um, about the aspect that, you know, Amazon is, is starting to eat into uh, Google's search business. Okay. Not uh, advertising business. Advertising, yeah. You know? yeah. And it totally makes sense, man. I mean, because guess what, folks, okay, um, Amazon, <laughs> like, has, well, I think they have either 40% of the market um, Just for like online business, yes, right? Exactly. Online as part of yeah, with right. the online, yeah. So you can imagine advertising wise, you know, exactly how much you know they could they yeah could advertise. And you can see some of the headlines right here. Advertisers shift to Amazon in blow to Google's dominance. Yeah, that, um, the journal. And yeah, yeah uh, well that's it. Yes, the journal. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, there are leaps and bounds behind them, right? But that's just an opportunity for growth if they ever get their foot in that door. Totally. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. We have the Dow up 56, NASDAQ up 42, SP's up 12. Come right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Folks, uh, Dow Industrial is up 38. We get the Nasdaq up about 42. S and P's up 11 and a half. Let's get into the uh, NDX and see what we have uh, happening inside that NDX. So the strength inside the NDX, uh, what is this? Uh, a line. A line yeah. technology. That's the. Uh, is that the, the teeth? Thing? No, I don't think so. Let's see. Oh yeah. You got that's, it. That's, Misalign. Yeah, that's M misalignment of teeth. Yeah. A twenty-four billion dollar company. Must be a lot of teeth there that, I, that are getting realigned. There's the you know what's amazing is that yeah, look Oof. at the, I know. Uh, it, this chart is phenomenal, folks, okay? And I think I don't know if it was a actually a, a new way of putting braces on quick, but that, that they seem to you know, get that market, get a big market share really they quickly. They changed something, man, yeah. right? Yeah, what's that, 2011, they're at 14 bucks. They, they climb all the way to 400. What happened What happened at, uh, in October of, of 2018 last year? Seriously, look at this. So this is a monthly buy you're looking at, folks. And in one month, it got cut in half. 400 to 200. That's pretty intense. That is. That's... <laughs> when, can we have a good oh, yeah. description? When is yeah. their earnings? I'm curious. Oh, there you go. 24 so of this So be careful month. of those earnings, because I'm yeah. guessing that October um, bar might have been their October earnings six months ago. Yes, yes. And, and, and I don't know what they came out with to drop from 400 to 200, but we've made it all the way back to 300. You better be careful. Yeah, slightly, <laughs> right? Look, look at, at that. Yeah. Wow. There's a lot of money in teeth, man. Especially, look at these numbers, right? I mean, you're taking in, so this year they're going to look to take in 2.4 billion, yeah. um, over half a million a quarter. And uh, they're pulling five bucks right to the bottom line, but they're a $300 stock, so five dollars earnings per share. It's impressive, but when you're trading at 300, yeah. just to put things in perspective, right? If you're a if you're a $50 stock, all right, you'd have to cut that by six. Right. And if you can divide that by six, you're making less than a dollar per share, right? And that's at a $50 stock. Right. So still. Decent earnings for sure. Uh, these numbers, the big numbers, though, I'd say. Yes. Three-year growth, huge. Um, Twenty-eight percent. And I wonder what this scanner is. Yeah, so they got that's in the secondary product, right? right? Maybe this is something that they're selling directly to dentists or something like that. Um, but nothing, nothing to shake your head at in terms of dismiss, because man, if they're growing at eighty-two percent and they're already at two hundred and seventy-five million, yeah. I mean, that's almost a hundred percent, which means they're almost doubling it every year. 
Huge. And that'll be at a billion dollars in three years itself. So, right. Yeah. And then, d then double that. Exactly. You know, uh, I just want to shift gears for a second, see if I can find this article. This is, oh, here it is right here. Now, this is pretty amazing, folks, okay? The Norway, right? Okay. So what happens is that, you know, you, you did the ads for me. Thank you about the, the gold report. Sure. 17 years, right? Pretty crazy, I know. So what happens, folks, is that, you know, I remember when I first started doing the Gold Report, Norway, this, this, this fund here, right, is such a huge fund. Their it's, sovereign wealth fund, yeah, yes. It, it's unbelievable, okay? So the, what they're talking about, they have a trillion dollars. The, the disconnect, which is so amazing, is that I believe, we'll, we'll pull it up, I believe Norway only has 3.2 uh, 3 million people. Okay. Like, when you divide that number, sure. it's like they are so rich. It, it is amazing, right? Yeah. And what happens, folks, is that this fund is spread across, you know, not every stock you bring up, but you can see when, when you bring up equities, the fund is always right there. They want know? to be as diversified as you can they be, do. right? They're basically in not everything, right, but I hear you. But they're, they're, not, they're not buying Amazon just hoping it goes no, to the moon, right? No, they're, they, they're just they literally, exposure to everything. And this story this morning is it, it, they took a year to make um, yeah. a decision about emerging markets, emerging right? market bonds, that yeah. they're going to bring that... that uh, the percentage down uh, from what they're buying, uh, you know, and that's just probably just another diversification, you know, across the board. Yeah, they're obviously not thinking that that's uh, for the returns they're getting, probably, right? right? The risks might not be warranted. So the fund could cut almost $15 billion in emerging market bonds. It has $310 billion of that trillion in fixed income holdings. Makes sense? I mean, just yep. like you talk about 60, 40 stocks, bonds type right. of relationship. Right. I mean, they're basically just planning for retirement for Norway, for their, yes. their you know, sovereign wealth fund. Uh, the fund will still have leeway to invest up to 5% of its bond portfolio in emerging markets, or about $15 billion. It currently owns $28 billion in such investments, with the biggest holdings in South Korea and Mexican debt. The move doesn't go quite as far as the initial 2017 proposal, which called for whittling its bond holdings down to just three currencies, uh, euro, dollar, and pound. I bet that changed a bit um, for the pound yep. in terms of no doubt. Um, big currencies such as the yen, Australian and Canadian dollar and Swedish krona were spared, um, as in they will be allowed to stay in there, as opposed to the original was going to keep them out. Um, and yeah, because it, and, and for those countries, they must be happy because it's like, okay, oh, for if, sure, if, right? you, if you can't have one of the largest funds out there invest in your bonds, it's like, okay. Yeah, and it's not just about the $15 billion that they represent, right? It's about right. the next fund. You know, if you're at Morgan Stanley, you're saying, hey, man, what are we missing that they're totally. seeing? You know, totally. why are they not buying Swedish Kroon? Why are we about to plow money into there? Yeah, and exactly. at, it, at a minimum, it would make you take a second look, right? Right. Um, so reactions were muted in emerging markets. I understand, I understand this, is, this is a strategic decision. One of the head of currency strategy at Commerce Bank, AG in Frankfurt, they changed the benchmark. There you go. It's not a sign that they get increasingly bearish. Um, on emerging on markets right, right now. now. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, interesting, man. Isn't it? It's, yeah. It's, 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 oh, yeah. We've talked about it many times, right, in terms of getting that low of a rate right. um, versus being in the U.S. dollar and right. getting that type of return right. versus the risks that you present to yourself uh, being, being overseas. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty wild. Right? Yeah. Um, How about Tesla? Oh, yeah. Good on Elon Musk. Oh, yes. The Teflon Don, man. He's definitely a Teflon Don. Man. There's no <laughs> doubt. They, they, if you didn't see this, folks, there's a, there's a great picture. He was coming out of the uh, courthouse. Uh, I don't know if it was a courthouse or it was a court hearing or whatever, but bottom line is he's coming out of it. Big smile. And um, the people were cheering. Oh, of course, Elon, man. He's Elon. got his, he's yeah. got his, I was just trying to see if they had any of the, because I saw the picture, of course, he yeah. rolls out, gets into his beautiful Tesla, right? Yeah. Um, is this from yesterday? Yeah, so the shorts have been, uh, so this is an article from yesterday, I thought so, yeah, just talking about how the shorts have really ramped up, not to. Yeah, not and to, made a fortune. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, and just, so this is uh, the short, so you're looking at, the red is the stock price, yeah. as it's from, this is January 1st. And it, it spiked to, we said, 350 at one point, right? Yes. March 15th, uh, right. excuse me, January 15th. Um, and the blue line is the millions of shares short that have gone from just about 25 million to now over 31 million, um, which, as the headline says, uh, 800, yeah, betting against the stock up nearly 800 million on the day that Musk arrives in court. But they were not happy, I bet, with uh, how it went, because it almost went as good as it could have went for it Elon did. Musk. It in did. In terms of the judge just saying, listen, 
Go back and make a new deal. I don't know how that happens because we were talking about it after your show last night. Right. The deal was as clear as it could be I, exactly. in terms of here's a lawyer. They need to review all your tweets. Right. And must just basically flip them off and say, right. I'm not going to do anything. And, and, and the lawyer somehow didn't report back to the board, which seems like a malfeasance. So I right. don't know what, what and, they're going to put him in handcuffs and make sure he can't tweet. I and, mean, and I'm what, joking. What but. had happened, folks, is that, you know, when, when I was on the air, and when Tommy and I were on the air in the morning, we were supposed to do the gas and the oil. Yes. They had a, a top live. And so they had a top live in the courtroom okay. was, as this is going on. And it was wild because you could tell as soon as the judge, the judge like told both sides, hey, get your pants on and, you know, get together and, and you guys get them come back give you two weeks to make an agreement and that was it it was like okay the well, Musk is still going to be around said, oh right <laughs> exactly like, the says we already did that yeah right yeah we'll try it again that's exactly what they said yeah, too right? that, that we already did what are you supposed to do now yeah stay right there folks tommy and i come right back hi folks tom o'brien here if you'd like to get my daily newsletter market insights then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is up uh, 35. You get the Nasdaq up uh, 39. S&Ps are up 11. Uh, let's go into the Dow Industrials and take a look at, uh, you know, yesterday, uh, Boeing was the big mover uh, inside that Dow, putting some big points into it. Um, today, it's taking 11 points away. So you, you, the mover out here today is uh, Home Depot putting 10 points positive, Walmart putting 6 
Johnson and Johnson six. Let's go to Home Depot and see what we have with Home Depot there. Well, so you're, you're pressing higher. This is quite a move actually in Home Depot too, right? Yeah. 179 uh, three weeks ago. Yeah. And talking so, about a good 10 percent pop um, yeah. since that date. That's just that's just some buying out there. So they come out with numbers uh, May 21st. It's hard to comprehend that we're going into uh, it's earnings season, baby. It's, it's, we're coming. We're coming. Right? It's here, I right? Mean, we one, start seeing, right? We're in April. I mean, all those, right? April 24th. We just looked at somebody. April 4th. You know, it's coming. Lululemon. We're all. I guess we're in Lululemon. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see that high. Yeah, let's. This is a nice move, man. This is like pretty impressive. Yeah. 164. Took it out. Yep. It last week has the volume. Probably build some cars. It's quite. A, some of these charts, man, are phenomenal. Actually. Yeah. You know. It's clothing. And how about Facebook? Speaking of. Yes. Phenomenal runs recently. Flat today, but yeah, but big run. Quite a run, yeah. right? Even going back from uh, to find kind of the low this year. So 128.56. If you go back to that kind of Christmas Eve, it was down as low as 123. So you're talking about 175. Yeah, 52 dollars off of 123. I know. Huge numbers, man. It's huge. Yeah, it's it really is. And I guess we'll we'll find out. Uh, let me just. Must be pretty good to run a company. New story breaks that you lost hundreds of millions of people's data. And you just trade higher. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you look at these numbers, you know, I, my take is that Facebook was huge five years ago, but it was only seven. They only took in 17 billion. Now they yeah. can take in 69 billion. Yep. And look at the growth to 2020. I mean, 83. Wow. Just staggering. In terms of, uh, I mean, they're going to take in more in the third quarter. No, oh, we'll go. Fourth quarter of this year than they did in all of 2015. That is amazing. Yeah, um, and, you and know. if you're watching Target TV, folks, you don't see numbers like this when we when we bring up the financials, uh, no, the revenue. You know, look at this three-year growth. They're averaging what 45 percent. I mean, that's yeah. the low end, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah, and it's like you know, of course you are when you got these numbers going on here, right? I mean, just staggering in terms yeah. of you go from 18 to 28. That's a huge. And then you go from 28 to 41. You go from 41 to 56, 56 to 69, 69 to 84. It's not slowing down. It's remarkable. Amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. There's no doubt. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. I was just going to say, we'll see if those numbers hold true, though, because regulation might be coming down the pipeline. Yep. Um, they haven't lost anybody yet, but I, as a personal user, not that engaged anymore. You right. deleted your account. We'll see if, you yeah. know. I'm a, I've been off it now almost a year and a half, I think. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And they're about to lose all the business. It no. might slow down some of that projected growth. But right. Yeah. Amazing. It really is amazing. Let's yeah. go take a look at the uh, small caps here and see what's happening. Cap arena. They're saying to the moon. I know. In the den. And <laughs> they're saying to the moon, the den. But I think this new moon is uh, basically. Uh, yeah, new moon today, right? Yeah. So you get the IWM coming into the downdraft from the 4th of March, okay. 158 to 155. And you know the volume's not bad out here today. So that's six million. You're going into 23. So that's that's pretty good volume. Sure. Because uh, what happens with the IWM as the GDX also, the volume comes in at the end of the day. You know, well, it's steady all day, but what happens is that the sponsor of both of these ETFs really get delta neutral at the end of the day. So okay. the last end of the day, um, you have some big volume that comes in so they can basically uh, get that net asset value uh, correct. You know? So we'll see where this uh, baby's going to shake out. And. Um, the NQs, if we take a look at these NQs, now, what, what that the NASDAQ futures haven't been able to basically get over the high of Wednesday, uh, 7615. Yeah, the NASDAQ 100. Right. You know, and this is, that's, this is going to be important because, you know, this has been really a lagger. Uh, it's always been not a lagger, okay? It's, it's, the, it's the one that basically can bring sure. that market up and down. You know, it's still hanging at these highs, but we'll see how it. Uh, how about Netflix? What do we got going on with Netflix? Netflix.
You know, I watched my first Amazon Prime program uh, this week. Did you? Which was Goliath. Which okay. is, uh, you'll enjoy it. You should check it out. Uh, Billy Bob Thornton, he plays a lawyer, and he's going up against uh, some defense contractors. Okay. We'll leave it at that. And kind of a thriller. I call it a thriller, but uh, I watched season one. It was pretty good. Good. Yeah. Nice. So we get Netflix, uh, flat, 366. And... It's hanging right at the highs. I mean, the high is uh, 423, but... For Facebook, uh, quite yeah. a year in terms of that reversal, right? Oh, yeah. Th this reversal off December, there's, there's no Oof, doubt. That's, seriously. It's 100% move. 231 um, up to 360. Yeah. So you're talking about 231, 115. We're above that. Because 133 off of 230. I mean, it's right. staggering, man. No, it is. Yeah. It is. Particularly because, folks, we're, it's only April 5th, right? Yeah. yeah. And you got Netflix. Now, to be fair, we're not up from January 1st because a lot of that popped in, like, the final week of December. Yes. Just on Netflix in particular, yes. that, right. that one week. Um, but like you said, man, you're up 40 50%, and it's April 5th. Yeah. And this is what the scary thing is, folks, right? So bull, bear, you know, they're going to fight it out like crazy here. When you do get counter-trend bounces like that, if we're in a consolidation... You know, we can come right back down the other side just as easy. So counter trend, you're saying the trend being down on Netflix? Or just in the market in general. Okay. okay. So you get the first leg down. Okay. You do the counter trend bounce, you come all the way back top. Okay. And we'll see who's going to win the battle. You know, but so how far is that counter trend bounce? Cause it's it's almost 100% right that's now. That's what, yeah. Yeah. And, you know. Still a trend if you get 100% bounce? Well, the, what, what, can no, you call the, it an upward trend? I, I'm, I'm saying just, it's a counter trend up here. This this trend has still been up since 2009, though, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. I did it. Right. The, to call the trend down right now, that's what I I struggle with a little. Yeah, bit. no, no, you're right. So no, there's, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. You know, my take is that yeah, we come down with so much volume that yeah, this is counter trend, but. <laughs> you, you, there's no doubt you're right in the I context. I like to keep that, the term trend to mean yeah. an actual trend, not. You know, I don't well, see a downward trend right now. I might have seen it in December. Yeah, no, um, I, 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 I get it. <laughs> it but so 29.40, which we're right next to, where 28.90 is the high. Yeah. And the cash S&P, you yeah. know. And you can see, you bring this back, what the amazing thing is that we've actually been here for, you know, 15 months now. Yeah. yeah. If, if that's, if it's going to sure. be a consolidation, which, which is real possible, folks, because you can see... We went up so dramatically that we were in a consolidation here. What is this? Uh, December of 2014. Okay. Over to. Yeah, about December 16, two years. Call yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And Pretty then, close November. Then you take the leg up. Yeah. And so far we've been in the same place here. Yeah. What? 15, 15 months. Yeah. 14, 15 months. Stay so right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials up 16, Nasdaq up 36, SP's up nine and a half. Come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. 
Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up uh, 32, Nasdaq's up 39, S&Ps are up 10 and a half, and uh, let's go across the Atlantic and uh, see what's going on here. What do we got? Look at this. Theresa May asking the EU to delay Brexit until June 30th. Why June 30th? Why doesn't she just ask them to delay it until like 2025? No. Um, setting up a battle with the bloc ahead of a key summit next week. So you got April 12th being the deadline right now, yes. right? Uh, May wants an extension to June 30th and aims to avoid holding EU elections next month. That's the big thing, right? They don't want to stay in the elections right. because then that just entrenches them even more in the EU right. if they want to leave, um, which would be politically toxic at home, exactly. It'll be up to the EU to decide on her request next week, as is the case, because as of now, if the EU doesn't agree to anything, they're gone on the 12th, um, right. and she's likely to be rebuffed. So that'll be the battle that we hear about next week. And then look at that. The European uh, Union president, Tusk, is pushing for delay as long as a year. So, they, yeah, of course, they don't want to lose them, right? You know? Yeah, I guess there's a lot in play there in terms of I don't think they will lose them no matter what. They don't want to lose them at all, I guess, for even in a small period of time, right? In terms of they'll lose them, they'll, they'll come back, even if it's a hard Brexit. Right. They'll lose them, they'll come back and make individual Some deals. Kind of deals. Yeah, yeah, right. So May cited talks with opposition labor leader Corbyn aimed at breaking the Brexit impasse as a reason for further delay in a letter to EU President Donald Tusk. Uh, it's the same length delay she asked for last month, which the bloc rejected. So it's like, you know, what, second, third, we're going to do more votes, more of the same. She's playing Groundhog Day in a big oh, way. It's frustrating that we have not yet brought this process to, to a successful and orderly conclusion, May wrote. The UK government remains strongly committed to doing so. So with her options dwindling, May is desperately seeking to get an agreement through Parliament, which has defeated it three times. So talks with Corbyn are yet to show much sign of progress, even as May is said to be willing to discuss proposals she's long rejected, including a second referendum. Yeah, Corbyn hinting on Friday that he's in no rush to reach an agreement with May, saying he doesn't think European elections are an issue one way or the other. Uh, lot, lots to go on wow. there, man. So let's see. In her letter, May said the government would prepare for EU elections due to be held between May 23rd and the 26th. In case Parliament hasn't ratified the Brexit divorce deal in time, the aim would be to cancel the elections if a deal is done in time. Pretty remarkable. It is, man. Yeah. Let's go look at that pound. So the pound right now... Yeah, so it's, it's at the bottom of the range it now. It sure is. You know, you're, you're at 130.02, and, you know, you get the bottom of this range, like 129. Yeah, and I'd say one of those mental barriers in terms of just getting below 130, kind of like, you know, Dow 20,000, yep. you know, pound at 130, right. versus you start getting into a 120 handle, a little bit dicier, especially when we've hit that level a few times and bounced. And the euro... Uh, Laying at these lows, man. I mean, yeah. the, 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 this were 112.28, and that 112.16 is uh, crucial. Yeah. You know? 
And I really see the impact on the pound more than the euro. I mean, the euro is going to be fine because those deals are going to come back. The pound really just could be hurt because uh, a hard Brexit is going to be pretty dramatic on companies operating in, in England. There's no doubt. Um, whether it's just for a period of a couple months before they get new right. trade deals worked out, but, right. but it'll be pretty... pretty so, so picture, folks, is that picture, you know, inside the United States, that just take one state and picture right. that if that one state you can't cross borders or cross money right. and cross t trading. It's trading yeah. and money. Oh, for sure, right. Uh, <laughs> be pretty Let alone intense. life, right? Let alone, yeah. and we're not even talking about the impact on just life, where, right. like, you might want to go across the border that you're used to crossing. Right. Um, you're talking about the shipments of goods having to cross, and then, what, each one has to be inspected? Yeah. Talk about a, a bottleneck. You know, in mm -hmm. terms of, so that's, there's a lot to figure out, man. Wow. Yeah. 877-927-6648. Let's go take a look uh, inside those S&Ps. They're just kind of laying at the same place. Yeah, that's... Yeah, decent jobs number and just kind of hanging up higher for, for the day. Um, it seems like that jobs number just kind of alleviated fears more than it pushed things much higher. Yes. In terms of uh, if we had had another big miss, excuse me, saying to Kevin Hanks yesterday, that would have been really worrisome because that means last month would not have been an anomaly, right? Right. This, this kind of right. confirms. Okay, that 20,000 was an anomaly. It even got revised to 33. We're almost at 200,000 new this month. Okay, that was an anomaly. It's pretty wild to think that you can keep banging out whether it's 175 or 200,000 jobs a month. Yeah, now the one thing that did miss was wage growth in right. there. That had, right. uh, I believe it was 0.14% wage growth, putting it to about 3.2% for the year. Expectation was looking for about 3.4%. Seems to be the continuing theme. You know, we're adding jobs, but you're adding jobs, whether it's the gig economy, right? It's, it's not the type of wage growth that you'd really like to see. To see that, you know, um, Middle class growth in terms right. of spending power, you know, it's it's right. it's if you're just adding jobs and no wage growth and we're at three point eight on un unemployment, why isn't there wage growth to fight over those workers? Right. That's the big And it seems like the economy is really skewed where the wage growth would be is that, you know, software engineers. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. That's 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 why the places well it's Silicon Valley yeah. or the you know, those large where those large sure. tech companies are, that's where those oh yeah. That's yeah. where there is but and the rest of the country, no. guess what? And there's no. not 200,000 engineers getting hired every month, right? No. Unfortunately, no. it's like they're no. a part of that. Right. But a lot of those are um, right. lower paying jobs. Right. That, yeah. Um, SBUX. <laughs> Starbucks, huh? Well, you know what I want to... One more time. I, the, the reason I'm putting this up, okay? SBUX. Normally, um, in Starbucks, I could, you know, either quarter past six in the morning. Okay. And, and they're pretty early, right? Yep. And this morning, I wasn't. This morning, I was there like at about uh, 10 past 8. Okay. It blew my mind how many people were in Starbucks at 10 past <laughs> 8 in the morning. Like, it was like, and, you know, I always look at the, the people behind the counter, and, it, and it's amazing, like, how many people they got to work there, but they need that many people to push it out. And Starbucks oh. does a great job at that. They in do. Terms of the pro they have, that's their business. You coffee in the morning, you yeah. don't want to wait, man. You no, know, and that I, is their... It, it's better, that's always so funny, yeah. but even the story. This is the first time I had a win, but you should have seen how hard these people were working. It's oh, yeah. Like, no, they do a great oh, job. They do. They, I mean, they were just cranking. Look I at mean, that. That chart is cranking. Quite man. a run, man, right? Even just from, where are we there? June of 18, you're trading at 47 bucks. Now it's 74. Yeah. Um, pretty remarkable. It and, really uh, is, man. You it's... know, they, they were at the forefront of kind of the app development, right? I mean, you got to get on it, man. Yeah. You, you know, the, the, in terms of ordering. I know. Now, ordering, like just walk you in. pick it up. That's right. really where they were in the forefront. Yeah. Look at that shot. Yeah. That, you know, I mean, that's, this is a whole nother leg up. And see, this is something, even if, you, if you're into charts, though, to look at that consolidation, same deal, sure. consolidated from, uh, what's that, 2015 yep. over to uh, 2018. Yep, three and years. Then, now all of a sudden you get a new floor. Yeah. And you know, when we take a look at this, let's just see, revenue wise. Oh boy. I know. Yeah. Big that, numbers. That's man. impressive for a Starbucks that's been around so long. Yes. Not nineteen billion in twenty fifteen. Uh twenty nineteen they're looking for twenty six billion. Yeah. And you know, eight percent growth on a number that's over sixteen billion. Right. Pretty good. Selling coffee. Right. And and food items. There's been a lot of oh, that yeah. growth. No, There's that, been yeah. a lot of that they, growth, they, to they, be fair. They do have a lot of I mean, it's hard to think back. They didn't used to have food. I know. Think about that. I know. It seems absurd, right? right. Now they have 
so much food. They have hot sandwiches. Oh, they, yeah. have, they have lunch sandwiches. They have takeaway. Right. They added all that in the last 10, 15 years. Right. Which is I cool. actually love how they got it set up. Those drawers. If you ever see them pull out those drawers, folks, they are so neat and they're so okay. stacked in. And they got the process, baby. They're all process. Filled. Yeah, it's big important. Time. Totally. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials up 36, NASDAQ up 35, SPs up 11. Come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002 when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the gold report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let Gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 58. Nasdaq's up 42. S&P's up 13. Dollar. Dollar's flat out here. 96, uh, 925. And, uh, folks, uh, great time to uh, test drive the gold report. Uh, if you'd like to test drive the gold report, 17 years. So it's be 17 years Sunday. That's right, man. The exact day, right? April 7th. Yeah. Um, yeah, today's the 5th. April 7th, 2002, man. We're checking out that first gold report upstairs. Um, pretty remarkable, man. 17 years. Craziness, right? That is Heard craziness, that ad? man. So you can, can come over. We don't have it right on the front page, but services. Ah, oh, excuse Our me. Newsletters. newsletters. Yeah. Thank you. Newsletters right there. Gold Report. Check it out. You can sign up whether it's uh, monthly, six month, yearly. Great deals on all of them, and you'll get instant access to, of course, uh, the last issue and uh, the new issue coming out on Monday, man. Right. And uh, where do we got gold trading at right now as we jump to that? What's what's gold rocking to? You get 1296. 1296. Huh? And if, you, if we look at the GDX, XAU, HUI, 
all had a great day yesterday. Sure, yeah. Look Big at that numbers. Part. You know, they rejected lower price. They go top side. Now you're basically halfway up into the consolidation. We've been in this consolidation for a long period of time since January 30th. I mean, Goldman is at 1284 yesterday, I think, before coming back a solid $12 yes, or yeah. so. Right? No, totally. Yeah. Totally. You can see the XAU, you're at yeah. 76. That was a nice move with the XAU. And the Gold Bugs Index had the biggest move. Um, this was a Look at nice, that bar. Yeah, this was, uh, we went from uh, 164 to 172. That's a bar. That's a bar. And, you know, we'll see where the rest of this shakes out. But it's almost bar, a 5% run, man. Yeah. No, it's, there was, you it's, know, they, I, they were buying the golds and those um, equities like they were buying the financials and the transports on okay. Monday. Okay. You know what I mean? It's like, there was a lot of buying. Yes. Stay right there, folks. We get a fast market coming up next, and we get our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. Be back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Well, look at him, folks.